Hey everyone and happy new year. If this is your first time on Simply Handmade, welcome. My name is Kel and if you're a returning subscriber, welcome back. I hope you guys had a wonderful new year and I wanted to bring this new year in with a huge bang. This is the biggest build that I've ever done on this channel ever and I'm so excited to share it with you guys. This is going to be a two-part series on how I built this storage cabinet and I couldn't be happier with the results. So before we get started I want to encourage you guys to check out the description box below for links to items that I discuss as well as my brand new website that I built and I've been blogging a little bit and I wanted to have a couple posts on there before I announce it. I've been blogging and you can find a free PDF on my blog that you can download with a comprehensive list of everything that I discussed for the cabinet build. Hopefully that intro wasn't too long, so let's just get into how I actually made this cabinet. So to make the storage cabinet, I collected all the wood that I needed and I cut it down to size. I have the entire cut list on my blog with tools and materials that you'll need to achieve this build and I'll leave that link down below. So I went ahead and cut all the pieces down with my miter saw and I know in this clip it looks like I'm about to chop my arm off, but I promise you I was nowhere close to the blade. So now that I have all the wood cut, I'm going to start drilling pocket holes in the 1x12 and the 1x8 pieces of board. So I did pocket holes on both sides of the 1x12. I made them about 6 to 8 inches apart and I did pocket holes on the outer edge of the 1x8. This is just to make sure that you'd be able to clamp the sides together as well as join the boards together. And you're also going to want to make sure that the wood grain is going in the opposite direction. So if the wood grain is facing up this way for the 1x8, you're going to want the wood grain to face the opposite direction for the 1x12 just so when the wood warps it doesn't warp like weird. When drilling pocket holes you're gonna need this Craig jig. Now this one I got for around $40 at my hardware store and I feel like it was a $40 well spent. Of course there are more fancier ones and there are some cheaper ones but I definitely re recommend this one in specific. I'll leave a video down below referencing Craig jigs and pocket holes and pocket screws and everything you need to know about that. It's gonna be linked in the description box below for you. One other thing that you're gonna want to do is keep your vacuum cleaner handy. You're going to want to use a vacuum just to make cleanup easier in the long run because there's going to be a lot of sawdust from the Craig jig. It's pretty messy. I glued the edges of one side of the wood and clamped the 1x8 and 1x12s together. I then added pocket screws and wiped away any excess glue on the top and on the bottom just so it doesn't dry because when the wood glue dries down it's really hard to stain if you're going to stain it so you just want to clean that up right away. After the two pieces were joined I took a 1x2 and I glued it down to the outside which is the side without the holes. I clamped it down and I flipped everything over so the pocket holes and the edges were facing up. And I started drilling some pilot holes. So I used four screws in total, two on the outer edges and two toward the center where the 1x8 and the 1x12 joined together. I did have a little bit of overhang so I made sure the sides were flush by sanding them down. Next up I grabbed my 2x2 board. I glued it to the sides and clamped it down and drilled the pocket screws into the wood. I added another 2x2 on the opposite side and you'll have something that looks just like this. I repeated the same process for the base. I added a 1x8 and a 1x12. I drilled the pocket holes that I needed to do and I also added the 2x2s on the edges. The only thing that I didn't do was add 1x2s to the base. So it's a 2x2, a 1x8, a 1x12 and another 2x2. That'll be the base of the actual cabinet. Now that you have the base done, it is actually time to assemble the cabinet. I wanted to start assembling the top, so I grabbed the 2x2s that's going to be the top support and I drilled some pocket holes on either side. So it's going to be four pocket holes, two on the outer edges of one, two on the outer edges of the other, making four total. I then took the side panels and laid them down on the floor, long side down, and I placed the 2x2s in between the bottom and the top side of the panel. I wanted this to be done right. If this is crooked, the entire unit is crooked and you just did all of that work for nothing. So I went ahead and grabbed my speed square and I made sure everything was square in the corner and then tightened the clamp. I did that for the bottom and the top. 
Once I have the top and bottom two by two secured, I went ahead and I added my pocket screws and I had the top support ready and done. So here you're gonna see the base that I have clamped in off camera. I pretty much did it the same way I did the two by twos on top. I just made sure the bottom was completely level as you can see here. So if you wanna build shelves, it's pretty easy. It's just like making the base, but instead of two by twos, you're gonna use one by twos. It's a one by two, a one by eight, a one by 12, and a one by two on its side, kinda of like this, so it forms a little lip. If you're confused about that, I have diagrams and all that good stuff on my blog, simplyhandmadestudios.com, so definitely check that out. Next up, you're gonna wanna measure how tall you want the shelves. So I measured it how I wanted it, and then I added the shelf. I just kinda hit it into place with my hand, and it wasn't too hard, but it was, as you add more shelves, it gets tighter and tighter, so you might wanna take a hammer and a scrap piece of wood and kind of hit it into place if you can't use your hand. I was referencing the little mark that I had on the side, so when I hit it in place, I knew it was going to be relatively level. I made sure to check that the shelf was actually level with an uh, actual level. That's not confusing. <laughs> I made sure that the shelf was level by using a level to make sure that that little bubble was in the middle. And I clamped down the front and I screwed the front parts in place. And I went to the back and I did the same thing and I screwed in the pocket hole screws. You're going to also have pocket holes in the center just to have more support in the center of the wood. And once both the front and back are assembled, that's when you're going to want to add the center parts. You don't want to do this beforehand. Um, you're just going to want to make sure that everything is completely level. So you're going to want to do that for each and every shelf and you'll have something like this. Once you have the shelves in place, or if you opted not to do shelves, you're gonna wanna put the unit front face down. We're gonna add the back panel next. I used this fancy plywood. I put it fa face down because I wanted the pretty side to be visible when you open the unit. So once you put it face down, you wanna make sure it's all aligned and drill some pilot holes and also some screws on the perimeter of the cabinet. Honestly, I can't tell you guys how many screws I put in. I just put in as many as I wanted to just make myself feel secure. I didn't even bother adding screws to like the shelves on the back. I didn't know where it was, so I just secured the outside perimeter. So while the unit is still front face down, I decided to take my 1x12s and secure it on the top. And that's pretty much it, guys. I patched up some nicks and dents and whatever with some wood putty and my putty knife and I sanded everything down. And once everything was nice and smooth, I went over it with a damp cloth to remove the really, really fine sawdust. And I painted it, so that's pretty much it. And before I let you guys go, I wanna just bring your attention to what I didn't do. I did not glue the top support and I did not glue the bottom support or the shelves or the back or the top. I didn't glue it because I wanna be able to take apart this build. This is just an apartment, so if we move, I wanna be able to take it apart easily and assemble it easily as well. So that's it for the actual cabinet, guys. I hope this video was really informative and helpful. And in the next video, I'm gonna show you guys how I built the actual doors. So before we go, I'm gonna encourage you guys to click the link in the description box below to take you to the blog post so you can get your free comprehensive guide as well as see the infographics of everything that I was talking about in a little bit more detail in case you had any questions. So if you do have questions, you can leave it on the blog post or you can leave it in the comments down below. I make sure to answer every single comment that comes here because I really appreciate you guys sticking with me and joining me for this DIY journey in 2018. Happy New Year, you guys. If you like this video, don't forget to give it a big thumbs up. Subscribe to this channel if you haven't already, and I'll see you guys in the next one. Bye.